On this episode, we are once again lacking brains. It's sad, but it's true. You cannot create brains. So we try to make empty brains. Can we have an empty brain? It all goes wrong, of course, but with a silver lining. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to the Advanced Schmuck Tutorial once more, episode 51. Mm. Okay, so today we are going to do brains. Load a brain, brain, <laughs> brain edit. So brains are, as a reminder, these little script-like bundles of joy that allow us to um, create behavior for enemies to kind of like create different types of behaviors just a bunch of entries little entries and the enemy will execute this and then um, it is kind of like a bit of a like a programming language more of a scripting language but you know the differences are uh, really small so to do we want to sanitize today we want to sanitize the uh, command input um, we want to add the ability to create new brains we cannot actually add, uh, create new brains and actually we want to also maybe probably delete brains as well that's also not something that's not happening. Let's do some more to-do list. I want to see uh, see an enemy. <laughs> I just want to see an enemy on the screen. And that's the, we already had that before. There's a lot that goes into making an enemy appear. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see about that. And then I also want to, yeah, I mean, the, the final goal is to make an enemy behave, uh, uh, use a brain. I want to make an enemy user brain. Yeah, that's uh, the overall goal, the, the future of, of our thing. Uh, I think in order to, um, I think we're gonna maybe need meta stuff, meta brain data. Uh, we're gonna need meta stuff. We're gonna, you, you, I will explain why. It, 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 going through this process will, will make us realize that we're gonna need meta brain data. Um, and what else? Well, then we're gonna more commands. We're gonna have to see what commands we need. Uh, I want to, I have some very specific ideas for what kind of behavior I want to replicate and we're gonna try to replicate this behavior and we're gonna see what stops us from, from replicating certain behavior and we're gonna try to implement this. Okay, right, so let's uh, talk about sanitization. So <laughs> this is this one of those special words and you know, it's, Maybe I'm using it wrong, but whatever. So like for online stuff, whenever you use um, user input, whenever the user can input something, you often talk about sanitizing the input, which means that making sure that the user cannot do something stupid uh, or cannot do something malicious with your website. <laughs> and um, I mean, this is not really a security thing right now, right? I, guess I don't care if I can like hack into Pico 8 by putting funny stuff into my, um, into my brain. <laughs> not my brain, then to that brain. <laughs> um, but um, and in our case, sanitization refers to like, uh, we want to make sure that we cannot do anything that will cause an error. Um, and so in this case, like there's, like, we already did that with numbers. We, we're making sure that we're putting like some numbers in, in the code. Um, but um, we also want to make sure that uh, CMD list. We're gonna create like a CMD list that whenever we have commands, that the, the valid commands are on the CMD list. Uh, currently, the only commands are heading and wait. That these are the only valid commands so far, but maybe later on we're gonna have more commands and then we have to expand this, this list of legal commands, okay? So let us, um, when we edit, when we edit a brain command, let us make sure that we're checking it for uh, like a legal command. Oh, it's here. Um, so if the type well is nothing, then we're gonna delete that. Else, um, we're gonna go for C in all uh, CMD list do, and then we're gonna be like um, if if type val equals c then end um, then we're going to create a local variable called found equals false and then if we find a match then we're going to say found equals true maybe maybe there's, prob there's probably a better way for doing this and then we're going to go if found then else end 
So if we found the command, then we do nothing. If not found, in this case, we want to set a type file to something that is safe. Um, we don't want to delete it, right? But we want to set it to something that's safe and that's going to be the way command, I think. Um, that's always a good idea. There's a problem here. Oh no, not e double equals, say not equals. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we have the heading and if we, if we type something that is not the as a valid command and we, we do that, when we type in heading, that's good. If we type in way, that's also good. Um, and those are the two commands that we have. Cool. All right, so let us delete. We have this. Um, we cannot create new brains currently. It's sad, but it's true. We cannot create brains. Okay, so here's where we have cell brains, right? Um, and we always make sure that we can, um, we can <clears throat> select a brain only that from the available brains, but now I kind of want to maybe be able to select a brain that is not in the data. So like an outside of the range of the available brains, I want to be able to select a brain that's outside of the range. And if that happens, then the whole brain drawing will be working a little bit different. So we're gonna do like a split here. So we're gonna go if cell brain is greater than uh, hashtag data. No, yeah, hashtag data. Then empty brain slot, right? This is, we have selected an empty brain slot, end. Um, and in this case, I want to, I still want to add a menu here, um, but that will be just like, an, like, a, like a text here. It's gonna be just like one button. And that button will be basically new brain. like so. Okay. Like so. Uh, and then uh, the command is going to be new brain. And everything will be staying the same. Um, <clears throat> let's see if this works. Ooh. Oh, right. We, hmm, we have to return here. Okay, that works. Uh, I don't like the formatting here. Okay. So now if we select a brain that's out of the, if we go to the end of the, our table of brains, then we have like this button that we can push and now that will create a new brain. And then in here, mm, 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 we want to uh, actually uh, react to the command new brain. So let, let's do that. Uh, where is that? So here's, no, an update function. All right, so now we want to react to that command. So this is the update function. We have the setup button. We're gonna think about that setup button later. It's, you, you will see what that button does. Uh, but for now, I want to have this new brain. Uh, or command, and that will add to our data comma, I'm going to add a new array. Can we have an empty brain? Had empty, no brain. Um, you know what? Let's see what happens if we do that. Let's, let, let's just see what happens. Nothing happened. Oh, it's new brain space. <laughs> yeah, the command was completely wrong. Let's try that. It totally worked. I mean, I'm not gonna argue with, with results, right? We have created a brain, sweet. Although when I'm thinking about how to delete a brain, then I have to say probably the best way to delete a brain is just delete all of the commands from a brain. And then if a brain is empty, we're just gonna dump that brain, right? So how about we gonna do that? The advantage here is that we don't have to create like a delete brain button. I'm worried about the delete brain button because if we do that, if it's easy to delete a brain, just like press a button and it's gone, uh, then there's always a chance that pressing, that people will press it accidentally. Uh, and, and that makes me nervous. So uh, let's create a brain that is, has a way, that, that, that has an entry, that has some stuff in it. Something like this, right? Let's try that. Does that create a, a useful brain? 
that does create a useful brain. And now I want to make sure that when we delete an entry from a brain, if that's the last entry, I want to delete the whole brain. Um, so here in enter brain, there we go. Um, right, so here's where we're del deleting the entries from a brain. And then we here's where we're checking if that brain even exists anymore. If it doesn't exist, we're gonna, gonna we're just gonna dump that brain. So we're gonna say like if um, hashtag data this equals zero, then uh, del i menu comma uh, this. So we're deleting uh, the from the uh, from, no not from the menu from data. We're deleting from our data the brain number this. Um, right, that's good. Um, the one last thing I, I wanted to do when we're pressing a button and executing the button, how about we do a return? We we said that it's a good idea to do a return here. Uh, so there is nothing else in this update function, but maybe at some point there will be. So just to avoid like weird um, mistakes, we're just gonna do a return. Let's try that. So yeah, I'm gonna create a new brain. I'm gonna delete this brain. And now I'm back to creating a new brain because now we are having selected something that is not a real brain. Okay. Now something to watch out for is that if I'm gonna delete this brain, I'm not gonna save, don't worry. So this is brain number one, I'm gonna delete it. Now brain number one has become brain number two. So something that we need to pay attention to. It looked as if we haven't deleted the brain, but we actually did delete the brain. Maybe, maybe we should do like a warning message. That would be a good idea maybe. How about here we add a warning message. Uh, so I copied the warning message that we had in uh, here when we're exporting stuff. And I'm gonna put it in the update function when oh no in the uh, in the enter brain function when we're deleting the brain I'm gonna just gonna say uh, brain deleted just like so we know what's happening right. This is why we have the message system. We haven't used that message system a lot. Good. All right, so let's go to our list. So we have creating new brains. Great. Now I want to see an enemy. And now we have to go through all of the steps required <laughs> to make an enemy appear on the screen. So just like to reiterate, what would we need to see an enemy? We want to have, um, we need a sprite sheet. I don't think we have the sprite sheet right now. Oh, we do. We do have the spreadsheet. Okay, so we don't need the spreadsheet. Uh, we need uh, my SPR. We need an. Uh, was it Npedia? How do you call it? Nlib. I think it's Nlib. Uh, we need Anilib. Anilub. <laughs> Anilub is also good. And I think that's that's roughly speaking all of it. I'm not sure if we actually need the NLib, but it might be nice to have here. Okay, so let's go through all those steps. All right, so I have a little window here, so I, I see the names of all the uh, of all the files. You don't see the window, but it's I just like open a browser file, uh, an explorer file, so I can see what I'm including. In. I cannot spell the world the word include shmup underscore nlib dot. So we need the nlib. We need the uh, my spr, my spr, and we need uh, we don't need a my spr meta. No, we don't need that. But we need the anilib. Yeah, there we go, anilib. And none of these are we're going to be exported. This um, file just edits one thing, and that's going to be just the brains. But um, yeah, we're including all of these. Okay, so now I want to add um, some functions that are responsible for creating enemies and drawing enemies and and moving enemies around. Let's load the couch map and let's go shopping inside the couch map to see what um, what we need from this couch map. So let's see. Um, we probably need the do brain function. And this is a bit of a, a weird thing because we will be working a lot on a do brain function. 
and uh, when we keep working with the brain editor and eventually we have to copy like uh, we're going to update expand this do brain function and eventually we're all going to have to paste it in here that's a bit bad uh i don't know how, what's the best solution here is but we yeah um okay uh, let's do also the do enemies function and also let's do the spawn and function all of these functions are maybe useful for our for our brain editor, uh, I, I I do not hate the do bulls function. Let's, let's just let's get to this as well. Although you know what, we're gonna deal with this later on when we're gonna have to deal with this. First of all, I want to also get the my SPR function. That is a very good function to have. We don't need probably don't need collision to be honest. But you know, um, psych and draw obj are really cool. So let's 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 copy this these out as well. All right, so let's get back to uh, the brain edit and put the functions in there. Yeah, so we, there's got cer cer there's going to be certain tools that will that will basically always going to be here, and that is going to be stuff like um, here, um, my SPR, the psych and draw obj. These are kind of like very fundamental things. They're probably they are probably not going to change a lot, or if they're going to change, they're not going to change quite often. Now there's also something that that is going to be we're going to call this enemy. Um, there's also three function from our from our gameplay uh, tab that is kind of these are subject to change and especially especially the do brain the do brain function here. Uh, that is one the one on top in this tab because we're going to be doing a most of the surgery on this one. Um, do enemies is the, like, just like the regular update function for the enemies. And spawn n is the thing that creates an enemy. I'm not sure. Uh, this is probably going to be very different from the way this works in uh, in the game. But yeah, for now I want to execute this spawn n function, and I'm just going to show an enemy on the screen in the center of the screen. Just want to see a static enemy. All right, so let's create an enemies. I'm gonna uh, Enemies, yeah. We're gonna create like an empty enemies array, <clears throat> and then an update function for brain. We're gonna say like um, if hashtag enemies. Um, if that's if there is no enemies, then we're gonna spawn an enemy. Spawn and uh, we're gonna put it smack in the middle. Smack in the middle. Enemy number one. Just like that. Yeah, that enemy will also get the any lip. Yeah, that's good. All right, so also um, maybe we should do uh, at this at the, at the end. We're gonna go do enemies, right? Because that that's gonna be that's this this thing that that makes the enemies work, right? Do enemies, right? And this will automatically launch the do brain function. So you might actually even get enemy behavior. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens. And then here when we're drawing the brain, so we're gonna draw the menu on top of the enemies. So we're gonna go for e in all enemies do. And then it's just gonna be like a very simple draw obj e. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, let's, man, this will probably, that, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, Right, we don't have an nlib function. We don't. We don't have an nlib. We are we aren't we importing one nlib? Yeah, we're importing one. Right, it's the wrong numbers. First, we have to specify which enemy we want to spawn, and then we have to specify where we're spawning. It's a little bit different, wrong way around. Did you see that? Did you see that? The, the, it's totally spawning. It's, it's, it totally works. It totally works. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is, this is good stuff. This is, this is extremely good stuff. Um, okay, uh, a couple of changes. So now the enemy flew away and is gone forever. We kind of want to make it go back, return when it, yeah, when it leaves the screen. We want to respawn it when it leaves the screen. All right, so let us do um, let us do the code here. So um, here in the do enemies, uh, what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to do like a very simple check if the enemy is on the screen and if it's left the screen, maybe with some additional padding, then we just make it. We're going to make it delete. Um, so 
if on screen, if not on screen. So the problem is, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, if not, not on screen. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. So we have to put this in this loop. There's a whole loop here, right? We, we're not doing just one enemy, we're doing multiple enemies. So if not on screen E, then delete enemies E. And that should next frame trigger a new spawn of the enemy, right? So now we just have to um, write this function on screen. Well, let's, let's make it obj because we might be reusing this function for other stuff. Um, there's an elegant way of doing this, but I'm just gonna do like the baby version of it, which we already did before, right? So we're gonna go like <clears throat> if obj.x is smaller than, let's say, minus eight, then return false. End. And then at the end, we're gonna do a return true already. So if we know if it's, uh, if it's, too far to the left is bad. If it's too far to the, uh, it's, it's too far above, then it's bad. If it's um, too far to the right, and let's say 128 plus eight, that's going to be 136. And then the same thing with y, right? So if the values are are out of range, then we're gonna delete that enemy. And let's see if this will permanently respawn that enemy. Oh, minus 36, right. It has to be 36. Okay, let's try that again. Yep, and now it flies there and responds. Okay, so now I want to do some little tweaks here. For example, if I change this weight, right? There's like, oh, that looks good, but I actually want to weigh only 30. Oh, it's fun that it stops. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. Yeah, it couldn't compare the number because it was a string, okay. Hmm, there's a bunch of things that just happened, okay. Um, so weight was a string, okay. Um, let us maybe, when we press enter, I thought we'd be turning things, oh, we're not turning things into, hmm, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, 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 okay, so in UI, when we're pressing, when we're pressing enter, that's a command entry. That's a parameters entry. Uh, we're turning it. We're turning it back into a string, but probably it's better to turn to turn it to just like leave it alone, like this. It's cool that it stops. I, I like that. Okay, but you see, like when I change this value. To 10, right? I have to wait until it completes the cycle again before it responds. It would be nice whenever I type in something, I've changed some parameters. I want to maybe restart the entire the entire enemy. Especially if I delete something, we might also get into trouble. Let's see how that what that does when I delete this. Yeah, it, it did something weird. Right? So <clears throat> so let us just um, delete the enemies when we um, when we edit a value, right? So here, here's edit. Um, that's good, but actually, yeah, we want to be basically go into UI. This is where we're editing stuff. Right, so before we do anything, I'm, I'm just gonna do enemies equals this. That will delete all of the enemies. Let's try this. So now when I edit this, it will immediately res respawn the enemy. All right, all right. Let us put on. Let's look what what we what we created. So I, we definitely see an enemy, and the enemy is already using a brain. But ah, hmm, the enemy uses the brain that is that is set up in the nlib function, right? That's what it does, right? Like if we set it to brain two, we don't see brain two. We still see brain one because it's an enemy number one that we're spawning here. So what we have to do is when we're spawning a new enemy. I mean, we're not even taking it from the brain lip function. It's just hard coded. <laughs> uh, let's put it to just cell brain. Um, so every time an enemy spawns, it always will have the currently selected, selected brain. Okay, so now it has this. Also, when we switch brains, we want to delete the enemies, we want to respawn the enemies. Um, so let's do that as well. Uh, 
um, enemies equals empty empty array enemies in equals empty array like this let's try that right so we can see now there's to do this there's, there's two genders this and this <laughs> okay so that worked um uh, let me see uh, so the, now the enemy definitely used the brain that is currently selected but now we're gonna get into the brain data, metadata stuff. So here's the problem. It's always the same UFO enemy that is being previewed here. That's, that's one thing that is bothering me. It's always the same UFO enemy, right? So if we want to create a brain for the big enemy, like for example, for the big chunky enemy that we have, the big chunker, uh, we can't like, or like we can, obviously we can create a different brain and then put it, like set it up as the brain for that other enemy. But um, we will always see this UFO as a preview because we're always spawning enemy number one. So what we might want to do is create some metadata that kind of like associate a certain enemy type or maybe a certain sprite with one of the brains. So we can like the preview that we're having here that will that the preview will be working with the sprite that we are interested in. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to set up some metadata. And there's one other important thing that we also need to maybe save in the metadata because that's the only really good place where it can go. And that is, right now we're spawning the enemy always in the center. But you know, that's not where enemies will spawn. They will be spawning off screen and then flying in, right? So we want to maybe be able to set up like, for the preview of the brain, we want to be set, set up like a spawn location. And that's not always going to be up top of screen. Sometimes, you know, we're going to have enemies flying from the sides and then we want to also be spawning them there to see, to have a proper preview of what it looks like when this brain plays out. And you know what a good place for is for this to happen? That's right, the doggy zone. Let's go to the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone. So, yeah, as I already said, I want to, you to make the setup button work. If you press setup, I want a new menu to pop up that allows you to set up metadata. That also requires us to set up a new text file for the metadata, load and save the metadata, and also manipulate the data data when you delete brains or manipulate brains and so forth. So that's going to be the huge next step. So we can set up our brains uh, that work together with the different enemies that we set up. That's going to be the goal for the doggy zone. All right, and then I'm going to move on to the place at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you, huge shout out. And yeah, thank you so much for supporting this show, for uh, donating on coffee.com slash lazydevs for making this show happen. I have a little question that I wanted to add at this point. We are kind of like running out of questions because I'm recording those episodes crazy early. So uh, I didn't, we didn't have time for new questions to pop in. Uh, this, is from, this is from a different video, from a very different video. And that video is about, you know, the five worst genres as your first game. Uh, I'm going to pop up that video somewhere up there. You're going to have to find it. So I, I had created, created like a list of bad genres to, to work on as your very, very first game. Uh, and that list did not include uh, first person shooters. So Ian Hasim asks, what about the first person shooters? Animations are very advanced. Um, I'm going to... Like, I wouldn't recommend making a first-person shooters, but I can see a case for first-person shooters, ironically. Even though, like, I my list included, like, platformers, I feel like first-person shooters are... You can make them work as your first game. You kind of can make them work. Uh, but you have to be careful. Like, there's... Obviously, there's an easy way of, of, of this going horribly wrong. But here are some, some ways in which you can work on a first-person shooter game as your very first game that might work. First, I think um, just making levels for existing shooters is a fine gateway into making games, especially like 3D modeling and stuff like that, into like the content creation part of games. That's a really valid way of getting into game creation. Um, I personally, when I was a kid, I, would, I created like um, levels for um, for uh, Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, I know there's also very uh, um, refined tools for creating uh, levels for 
Doom, like all the boomer shooters, Quake, you know. So that's a really cool way of doing, doing first person shooters as one of the early games. Also, you have to acknowledge that um, a lot of engines, a lot of modern engines like Unity and um, like um, Unreal Engine, uh, they are kind of designed for first person shooters. And they usually have like a very short path to making a first person shooter work. My experience is that um, with a lot of the students I have, they quite, quite often default to first-person shooters as kind of like a, um, the way you interact with something. And it works kind of well, because you can just like launch Unity, create like a plane, drag and drop your, your standard uh, first-person controller on it, which is like a prefab that already exists, and you can just run around and start mouse aiming and, and stuff like that. So in this regard, getting a first-person shooter to work is kind of not that hard, because the game kind of already the game engines already expect you to be uh, to be working on that kind of game now once then you have your uh, first person controller creating levels in unity can be actually more difficult than creating levels in those old shooters like doom and so forth and obviously something that will immediately happen is that players will uh, new developers will or, or immediately start to try to recreate some shooter that they are fond of like you know hey now I have <laughs> I ha I'm working around on the plane and I can mouse aim. Next step, massive online multiplayer first person Counter-Strike. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that obviously goes wrong. Um, but as, I think as long as you have like a small level and you know, the experience is like very narrative focused and not so much about, about uh, creating like this huge level that you fight your way through and so forth, then I think a first person game can work pretty well. Right, so we have created an enemy, that enemy has a brain and we can edit that brain so we just have to do some, a little bit work behind the scenes just so we can like really customize you know the stage at which in which we are editing the enemy and then we can start making all those brains. See you next time around guys, bye bye!